Hello, take two. Chapter nine, strings. Let's try again. All right, guys. So I made a mistake on the multi-line string, so I'm redoing the video. And I also double check with the product team to validate some things as well. So when you have, um, when you ever you want to do a new line, you either have to do this or um, you might have to put an R depending on the operating system. Okay, you can click on the link here, and we you can actually find out um, more information about all the escape characters to escape you know, based off what you want to do exactly. For Windows and Linux, I kind of redid the documentation to make it more clearer. Um, so with Windows, you have to include the tick R, tick N. And with Linux, you do a tick N, okay? And with Classic Mac, it'll be a tick R. But I heard that tick N works. And um, when I've tested on Windows Terminal and uh, PowerShell, TickN also works for Windows uh, for the newer um, operating system. So, you know, it may or may not work for you, but tick R, tick N will work. Tick N may or may not work, okay? So I hopefully will get to a uniform, um, you know, escape new line uh, sequence for um, getting a new line. But for now, It'll be uh, still a little bit different. So for Windows, it's going to be basically we have hello and we have world. These are the two ones, I'm sorry, the two words that we want to split, and we're going to split it with the tick r, tick n. Okay? And, or you could do it another way. You can do a uh, bracket with a zero, and then from there, when you do a f, uh, F just means I want to insert something into that particular spot, and then you're going to do the new line, and you'll insert it here. So environment new line basically determines what environment you have and what new line would satisfy, or what new line you know character um, will satisfy a new line in the string. Okay. So for Linux, again, it will be a uh, tick n, and it's the same thing. So when we run this uh, Windows command, we're going to get false because I'm running Jupyter Notebooks in a Linux environment. Okay, And I'm running the PowerShell because it's running on PowerShell Core, or and, uh, using it with the .NET code. right? If you have Linux, you can install PowerShell. Let's see. When I have um, Windows Terminal and I do the same command to identify the environment, it says that it's Windows because it, said, it, it comes back as true, right? Does it equal this new lines? And ends false, right? But when I do um, this particular sequence, it's going to give me a new line, right? Hello, new line, then world. But if I take away the R, it still does it. So depending on the operating system or what you know, what terminal you're using, you may be able to get a new line. But you always want to make sure that um, just to be safe, just do this for now, right? Let's see. For hello world uh, for Linux and you know um, from I believe the new Max they'll take the tick in so that would be the same thing it will be hello with a tick in and then world For line breaks, for um, you know, when you have double quotes, you can actually do a line break just by pressing enter. And this is kind of your script, and you hold shift, press enter, and this would be a line break, right? Hello world. If it's on the same line, it won't line break. 
you can also just do this and it'll line break. Okay? If you do a literal string, it also works. Okay, a here string is going to be um, a way to do also do a multi-line string, and it'll be indicated with a at sign and a quote, double quote, and then you close it with a double quote at sign. So the way you open it, you kind of reverse it, and you close it the different way, okay? For this example, let's do, um, I have an HTML code that I'm making, and this was from Giphy. And what we're doing is we're just embedding a GIF, okay? And so I just included the iframe from Giphy. And when you run it, you want to take this code, and this code's going to come from here, and it's going to go to out display. Out display defaults as HTML. Now, if you have PowerShell and you're running this as a script, this won't work. This only works within the constructs of Jupyter Notebooks. Within PowerShell or those environments, this will not work. You're going to have to um, export it to HTML and then um, present it somehow in, um, you know, through a browser or something. This only works in Jupyter Notebooks, this code. But as you can see, um, it runs the uh, the code, and then it, it presents it in the output screen. The literal here string, so here's a difference. With a double quote, the double quote can evaluate, um, you know, variables within the, uh, um, the string. But with a literal string, it wouldn't expand or evaluate those variables, okay? So let me show you an example. We take this and we run it. You get the following line won't be expanded, dollar sign get date because this is a literal here string. But if I take it and turn it to a double quote, okay, then it then it evaluates that variable. Okay? So this variable gets evaluated, and this is where it goes. Alright? So again, single quote does not evaluate variables. You got to keep this in mind. This is something that's going to be very important whenever you uh, you know, build any kind of strings and want to evaluate uh, variables and then you have that string to insert into some other uh, condition or operator. You want to make sure you're using the right quotes or single quotes or you want to make sure it, it's not expanded so you can take that and do something with it. An example is uh, maybe using that and running it as a command block in a script. All right, let's see. If you want to insert variables into a multi-line string, you can't use a literal string. Um, yes, so that's basically what I said was, uh, I kind of showed you the example of inserting a variable. And uh, yeah. Uh, use variables in a string, so, uh, oh yeah, concatenating. So if you want to concatenate, Here's string one, here's string two, and then what's happened is this is string one, the dollar sign indicates the next string, and it's going to concatenate it together, okay? This will work, right? PowerShell. You put a space, you can have a space in PowerShell. Or, talked about it before, you can do you know, carriage return. Or new line. Okay. Let's see, use the plus operator. You can also join strings using the plus operator. So in this example, you see how I, we, the string was joined? There was no plus key in between. But if you do use a plus operator, then you can build, you know, you can put something in there. So they're both the same thing. Depends on what you want to do. You can put a space right here. Um, and then now there's a space right between the between the words or you can just put a space over here both ways work let's see um 
this also works for properties of objects. So there will be times when you want to uh, inject um, you know, properties of an object into a string, uh, like I mentioned. And if you do, you're going to do a plus, right? And then you're going to um, identify that particular variable, and then a plus, and then adding it. So whenever it'll basically concatenate those strings together, and the variable will be in the middle. Okay. So the host.name is the .NET interactive host, right? And you see how when you specified, um, if you look right here, we specified a double quote, and then a single quote is right here, and then another single quote is right here. So you can actually, if you don't have those single quotes, then it'll just look like uh, this, where there's no single quote. So there will be times where you want to put quotes in. You're allowed to because if you are start, if you're using the uh, single quote as a way to start that string, then you're then a single quote will close it, right? But if you have a double quote, then a single quote you can actually use it in the string to uh, you know put around certain words. Okay, let's see, what is this one? Tomorrow is get day, add day. So another way to um, evaluate a variable within a string is if it is a double quote, remember, you can't do it with a single quote. If it's with a double quote, you can evaluate uh, the variable in a string. So this will be evaluated, right? Hold shift, press enter, and it says tomorrow is Friday. If you put a single quote, you're literally passing the uh, string before it gets evaluated. So then maybe you want to use this as a command somewhere else, right? But you want to decide what you want to, um, you know, what do you want to do with that string so you can decide what um, quote to use. Special characters. So again, um, these are all the special characters. I included a link here for the documentation, so it'll take you right to the documentation. Let's see here. Um, example. This test tab RN is a second line. This, okay, so this tick T, and then the other tick T is a tab. So this, says tab this says tab and then we're these are the tabs okay then we do tick rn which then says hey i want you to go to the next line and that's it and then this is on the second line okay so this is just an example of using those escape characters creating a basic string. So that will be with uh, double quotes. Double quotes, again, is gonna evaluate the variable. So let me copy this so you have it. All right. And then we'll get the output of my second string, starting with a variable. Um, my string variable, this won't work. So we actually put this as my string. And it'll work. Okay. A literal string. Um, wait, to use a double quote inside a string, it needs to be escaped using the escape character back tick. Oh, okay. So what this says is uh, if you want to escape a double quote, you use a back tick, right? So here's an example. We take this, my string. And we want to output my string after it. So we look at it. You see how there's a double quote here? Here and here. And then there's a single quote here and here. The single quote will work automatically, right? But if you want a double quote, you have to just put these back ticks, right? So, the, so you have to put these back ticks. Otherwise, if you don't do that, it'll actually close that uh, string, see? See how it closed? Then you have to do a plus key and then do something like that, right? But if you don't want to do a plus key, you just have to escape that uh, double quote. 
and then it'll work. Okay. Again, literal strings are not going to evaluate the variables and uh, special characters. And let's see for this example, we look here and we look here and here's the n and then here's a yeah, that's a variable so yeah that's the string so let's uh i'm actually going to copy this build another cell let's run it okay so that says simple text including uh tick and and a variable reference okay if we turn it to double quotes now that um what happened so it did that new line and it evaluated this variable but um yeah the variable reference so and a dash reference so yeah it, it evaluated the variable although there's nothing in there it did evaluate it. Okay. Uh, fix it. All right. So to use a single quote inside a literal string, use a double single quote or a literal here string. Double quotes can be used safely inside a literal string. Okay, so like we talked about, if you use a double quote to build that string, you can use single quotes. If you use single quotes to build the strings, you can use double quotes. If you want to escape those um, single quotes, then you just have to um, put it twice. See, so this is, this is going to mess up, right? Uh, but if you put a double quote or double single quote, it'll work. Will escape work? Oh, escape won't work. Okay. So escape only works with double quotes. You have to do double quote with uh, literal. With the single quotes, you have to do um, the double single quotes. Okay. And as you can see, the uh, double quotes still come through. All right, formatting a string. So let's see here. So if you want to format the string, we have what he, let's see, we have a hash and then city equals Berlin. Okay, city equals Berlin. And the result, it says you should really visit zero and then right here is how it's going in so again you build that hash and then the city parameter right berlin goes into city and then city goes into here you specify hash city and then hash city is going here into that zero spot okay so when we run this it doesn't work so let's see why error from a strings greater than zero blah 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 uh, let's just copy this again maybe it might be something I'm... okay so that works all right so it says you should really visit berlin and um, just to show you so another example, you will put a one here. We'll also add another item to this hash. So remember, a hash can have multiple objects that have properties within it. So city will be one. And then another one you can do is something like um, you should really visit... like that maybe Miami so you should really you should really visit you should really visit zero and like that now watch when I run it um, let's see hash shitty oh you see why that's why I'm had a mistake I did it I did it prior um, 
you put a comma here, it says that I did not provide enough um, parameters that are going to be injected into here. I only provided one, but it's expecting 0 and 1, and I only provided this one, right? And again, it starts at 0, so I just have to provide another one. And it works. OK, so um, yeah, I got to go, guys. But uh, thank you for watching. And uh, I think that's it.